in China. Volkswagen, Toyota, and General Motors have massive factories. And I'm talking many, many massive factories where they have historically for the past 10 or more years, in fact, more than 20 years for most of them, been producing internal combustion engine cars. It was the old way, it worked well. In fact, they made billions of dollars and the Chinese government, they never blinked an eye. They knew that they were hiring Chinese workers and these Chinese workers would learn how to use this technology from the West and install this technology or make it better by copying it and then improving on it and putting that technology into Chinese car brands. So they let this go on because they had a long goal in sight to make their own car companies in China eventually dominate the global automotive market. This year, we are seeing these manufacturers from the West who thought, hey, we'll go to China and make billions. We're seeing them face potentially dire economic consequences. Why do I say that? Well, because General Motors has more than 100 billion in debt. Toyota has nearly 200 billion. And Volkswagen, they have around 190 billion as well. Big problem here is all three of these manufacturers rely on China for up to 50% of their global profits. That is a huge number and they are losing money. They are bleeding money because right now, many of their factories have been closed. Why? Because their cars simply are not selling. They're sitting on dealer lots attracting dust because they are internal combustion engine vehicles. This is a disaster. It is an unmitigated disaster for them, especially because most of them do not meet China's new emissions regulations. Sure, you can say, oh, they can just change their cars and meet the regulations, but it doesn't work that way. It requires billions of dollars in investments. Do they invest billions of dollars into an old internal combustion engine technology, which has no future? Or do they simply realize the riding is on the wall. Chinese car companies, along with Tesla, are growing this year in a car market that is shrinking. Legacy automakers' sales are being decimated. So are their profits. And the problem here is their costs are not really going down. They are running their production facilities at 50% capacity. That is completely economically unfeasible. What all of this means is that whilst car sales plummet, for Volkswagen, General Motors, and Toyota in China, their costs in their factories are actually increasing. They now need to store all the cars they've produced and they're running out of space. In addition to that, their dealers are starting to give up. More than two and a half thousand dealerships went bankrupt in China last year. We don't know the numbers this year, but considering the way the car market's gone this year, it must be far worse than what last year was. As a result, all legacy automakers have had to massively reduce their prices this year, some of them by 50%, 50%, meaning they're selling way under the cost to manufacture the car. Remember, the average margins on these cars is usually around 8 to 10%. If you're selling at a 50% discount, you're losing massive amounts of money. And this all leads to the one fact. The reality is these car manufacturers will lose billions by the end of this year. And... There is no hope in sight. The Chinese car market is going EV only and Legacy Auto is being completely left behind. Unfortunately, this is a situation of their own making. They knew exactly what was gonna happen, but chose to do pretty much nothing about it. Most people are not aware of the fact that China is the world's largest car market by a big margin. Around 27 million cars are sold in China every year compared to the second biggest automotive country of the United States, which sells around 14 to 15 million. In other words, the Chinese car market is nearly twice the size of America's. However, in the past, car sales were dominated, and I mean dominated by legacy automakers, General Motors, Ford, BMW, specifically Toyota and Honda, Mitsubishi, Mazda. Yeah, they're all big players but they're being squeezed out. Here are the winners and losers so far in the car market in China this year. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Let's get straight into it. First, car sales for the 15 biggest automakers in China in month of March. Number one by a big margin was BYD. Now, these, these sales charts here, you need to be able to interpret them correctly because it's not really fair to say that FAW Volkswagen is in second place behind BYD when they take a 50% split. I mean, really, can you say who gets the sales? Does FAW or does Volkswagen? 
I mean, Volkswagen owns 50%, FAW owns 50%. I think therefore it's fair to say that they get it 73,000 each for the total of 146,000, putting them in second place. Well, not really second place, is it? Putting them actually all the way down in seventh place behind Tesla. Now, Volkswagen, its most important car market in the world is China. 50% of its profits come from China. Numerous people have actually quoted me on that, and it's true. Volkswagen, 40% of their sales are in China, 50% of their profits. You'd be shocked to hear that. But I, I read comments like this, I've seen it so many times. Oh yeah, sure, Volkswagen sell a lot of cars in China, but who cares, they would make nothing on them. It'd be worth peanuts. Yeah, well, the actual reality is they make more margin on their cars in China, or did in the past, than they do everywhere else. Did in the past being the key operative word. Volkswagen are in big trouble. Now they say they're going to invest $200 billion into electrification over the next six to seven years. Where exactly is that money going to come from considering they already owe $190 billion? I mean, and they're losing their biggest car market in the world at the same time. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know where they think that, I mean, who's going to give them that money? It's just insane. Maybe someone will. Maybe someone much, much braver than I am anyway. BYD clearly first, second, Technically, Volkswagen, FAW. Third, Chang'an, Chinese company, 93,000 sales. Fourth, another Chinese company, Geely. Fifth, SAIC, Volkswagen. Now, SAIC are a Chinese state-owned company. Sixth, Tesla. But here the key is, BYD and Tesla and Chang'an and Geely own all of their sales. They're not joint ventures. That's why they're only listed as the one company. So BYD, Chang'an, Geely, and Tesla China all beat the joint ventures of FAW Volkswagen and SAIC Volkswagen because they independently own those companies and therefore make 100% of the profits. After Tesla was SAIC General Motors. Now General Motors sales are down 7% in the month of March, but unfortunately General Motors is dying very fast in China. They've invested tens of billions of dollars. Uh, that technological knowledge has been kind of accumulated by the Chinese. I said, thank you very much. Now the Chinese buyers are not buying General Motors cars anymore. Sales are down over the past 12 months by around 45%. It's happening very quickly for GM. I made a video about that. I'll put a link in the description so you can see just how bad it is for GM. FAW Toyota is up next in eighth place. Now it's worth pointing out here that at one point in time, Toyota, FAW Toyota were in first place. They're now in eighth. So anytime the media tells you, oh, sales are up for, for Toyota in China, it's because they ignored the previous six months and focus on the one month where sales were up. Next is GAC Toyota. So clearly, as you can see, FAW and GAC own 50% of those joint ventures with Toyota, followed by BMW Brilliance. Now, interestingly, FAW Toyota and GAC Toyota, FAW Toyota has done much better, 7% increase on sales versus the same month last year, whereas GAC Toyota, their sales are down 31.1%. It's also worth pointing out that no one in China seems interested in Toyota's EVs. They've decreased the prices by about 25 to 30%. Uh, they're cheaper than everyone else based on their comparative size and specifications. They're still not selling. That's worth considering for Toyota's future in the country. Next is Great Wall Motor in 11th place. Now, as you can see, they own their company 100% no joint venture, followed by Beijing Benz, that's a joint venture with Beijing, Dongfeng Nissan, that's a joint venture with Dongfeng, SAIC General Motors and Wuling, they make the Wuling Hongwa Mini EV, sales down unfortunately by 31% in 14th place, and then Cherry, sales are up by about 1%. So far this year, for the first three months of the year, the sales are quite different to what I just shared with you. BYD has increased their sales by 77%, over last year. Now, considering the performance of every other company here, which, well, all of them are bad except for Tesla, this is a staggering result. Staggering. 77% year over year shows you that they have taken market share along with Tesla from their rivals in a big way. I mean, look at this. Look how bad this is. FAW Volkswagen down 13%. Chang'an, Chinese company, down 7%. Geely, down 8%. SAIC Volkswagen down 20%, GAC Toyota down 18%, SAIC General Motors down 34%, BMW Brilliance down 2.5%, FAW Toyota down 2.1%, Dongfeng Nissan down 37%, SAIC GM Wuling down 30%, Beijing Benz down 6%, Tesla China up 27%, Great Wall Motors down 42%, and Cherry down 19%. Now, isn't this an interesting correlation that the two best selling brands in China versus their performance last year are BYD and Tesla. 
Now that's not technically true. I mean, GAC Aon are actually doing even better than those two, but GAC also have their own internal combustion engine business. So it's like they've separated the business into two different entities to try and make one look really good, which it does, and the other one looks not so good. GAC sales are down, but Aon sales are up by 97%. Aon only sells electric cars. Now look at the electric car sales here. This shows you exactly what's happening in China. The massive disruption of the Chinese car market by Chinese car companies and Tesla. BYD up 86%, Tesla up 17%, GAC Aon up 97%. The tri-venture between General Motors, Wuling and SAIC down 41%. I mean, that's the only company here in the top nine that is a legacy company. And it happens to be General Motors. I mean, this is terrible because when you look at the next place finisher, Geely up 98%, Chang'an up 56%, Li Auto up 89%. Neo up a paltry 3.9%. You can see why, why I'm so concerned about Neo lately. One of my videos have reflected this trend. It's not great. I mean, look at all the competition. Up, 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 up. Then we've got BMW Brilliance in, in 11th place. Now, this is only BMW Brilliance's EV sales. Their actual company overall is down this year. Their EV sales, though, they're up 84.6%. But it's worth having a look at why that is. Many of BMW Brilliance's dealerships in China have reduced their EV prices by 50%. Seriously, you're looking at 28 to 30,000 US dollars for a three series electric car, which is actually the same size as the BMW 5 series in the rest of the world. It's the long wheelbase version. It's insanely cheap. They're selling it way below cost price just to get them out the door. Next, SAIC Volkswagen, their sales are up. Next, FAW Volkswagen, their sales are up 2.2%. So you can see Volkswagen's EVs, uh, sales numbers have barely changed this year. Basically, it's just reflective of Chinese bias. They don't think Volkswagen's EVs are very good, which you know, in China, in comparison to some of the Chinese EVs, they're not. It's fair. Next in 13th place, we've got the SAIC Volkswagen joint venture. Sales up once again, 8.9%. So 2.2 plus 8.9. We're looking about an average of 5% increase in sales for Volkswagen this year in China, meaning EVs still represent a tiny percentage of their vehicle sales in China, meaning they're screwed in China. Next, we have Xpeng down 55%. I don't know what's going on with them. Followed by Nita down 47%. Now, those numbers were the for the month of March. But if we look at the entire year so far, January to March 2022, it tells us a bit of a different picture. BYD is killing it with an 80% increase year over year in vehicle deliveries. Tesla is in second place in China with a 27% increase, followed by Aon with an 80% increase. SAIC GM Wuling down 26%. Chang'an up 98%. Geely 33, Li Auto 65, Neo 21, Nita down 25, BMW Brilliance up 76%. So you can see like what I said, customers will buy a BMW EV if it's cheap and they're cheap right now. Great Wall Motor down 39.7, Xpeng down 47, FAW Volkswagen down 4%, Cherry down 68% and FAW Hongqi down 470%. You can see here, Volkswagen only pop up on this list in 13th place, and that's a joint venture, meaning technically Volkswagen are only selling about 8,500 EBs in that joint venture. Sales have gone down by 4% versus last year. What this all means, it all comes down to mean one thing. Volkswagen's electric vehicle sales for the first three months of this year are down in China versus the first three months of last year. Now, they said they would ramp production. They said they were opening mega factories in China produce, to produce hundreds and hundreds of thousands of EVs. They said that more than a year ago. Volkswagen Group debt is more than $190 billion. General Motors are having the same problems in China. It's bad for these two. It's also bad for their competition. I mean, General Motors and Volkswagen, yes, they're getting decimated in China, but at least they do have electric vehicle production facilities in Europe and in America, unlike their Japanese competition. Once their Japanese competition lose China, which they will, Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Subaru, Mitsubishi, Mazda, once they lose it, they're in big trouble. Japanese economy, is in big trouble. It relies on these sales and it relies on the manufacturing jobs to provide these cars to Chinese citizens. Once that finishes, which it will, I hold very grave concerns for the Japanese economy. It could be a, a literally, it could be a new depression. This could plunge the world into depression. 
because we're seeing an enormous wealth transfer from one part, one part of the world, basically from North America, from Europe and from Japan to China. What flow on effects will that have? I have no idea. You let me know what you think in the comments. If you're an economist, especially, thank you for watching my friends. Bye-bye.